This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Before of, uh, every class, Hashem Barak is so kind to empty my, my battery completely that I will, uh, that only he gonna recharge me. That's the, the main way that I'm teaching, that I'm um, really channeling myself, opening myself to what the Hashem wants to say. And that's why the classes fit to, to, to you, to the people that are hearing those classes. Because uh, if I would prepare something and I would come to bring it, to deliver it, so, okay, nice. You had time, you were sitting, you were learning, we're happy for you. But uh, what's it going to be with us? But uh, Hashem is doing a big, huge favor for me every, every before of every class, really emptying my battery completely and um, and I'm coming completely clean to you to share with you the thoughts of Hashem. Um, so, uh, so I'm going to tell you a few things from the inner spring. When people are judging themselves and they're coming to negative thoughts about themselves, blaming themselves and hating themselves and all of that negativity is, is, is false, it's not right. The, the conclusions that you come up with, those negative conclusions that you come up with, they are wrong. They're not really representing the truth. What that you see about yourself is not reality even if you see it. Let's say that now you hurt someone, you insulted someone, and you're now going to go and start hating yourself for it, and judging yourself and blaming yourself on it. So the conclusion of yours to hate yourself for it, to blame yourself for it, to think that you were doing horrible things and that you're a horrible person and that you're so selfish and how can you be so cruel and you're not sensitive enough, it's wrong now. But you were acting in a selfish way, you were cruel to that person, something was right about it, yes. That thought that you have about yourself is wrong, but the act that you're judging yourself on is right. Means what that you did, you did it. You're right, it was wrong. But your inner intention was not that one that you think that it was. Mean the fact that you're now gonna hate yourself on what that you did is wrong. Because the reason of you hurting that person was not because that you're an evil person. It's because that you're a very hurt and broken person or something like that. And this is the difference and it's like heaven and earth difference. We must understand that when we are being negative about ourselves, we're losing connection to the truth. We're losing connection to reality. When we are going with that, with those judgments about ourselves, we're losing the connection to the truth. And I'm going to explain to you how and, and how, how it happens and why it happens to us. When something wrong is, is going on in your life, so the first thing that happens to the person is an automatic reaction. You're reacting automatically, you're afraid, you're worried, you don't want to experience that feeling again. That's something that happens. It's it's above your control. It's not something that you can control of now. Maybe you can work on yourself to develop skills to clean yourself that you will have more awareness in the next time or in one year from now. But as for now, when something just happened to you, first of all, the way that you feel about it, it's something that you don't have an access to. You cannot change it. You cannot do anything about it. 
So now, if you felt that something is coming, a certain argument, a certain rebuke, a certain shame, insulting, something, and it wakes up a certain fear inside of you, that's it, you're lost in this situation. There's nothing that you can do because that fear already gonna take some anger out of you or some criticism out of you or some bad thoughts and negativity. Something wrong gonna come out as a result of that fear that you felt. So first of all, what it means is that we need to have a lot of patience with ourselves about our condition as of today. Not to criticize ourselves on today. Now, if you felt or realized that you have some things that you need to work on them, so great. So take it to work, start working on it, and slowly, slowly you're going to progress. But to expect from yourself that you will change and that you're never going to do it again, that's impossible. It's above our power. It's not something that we can do. Now, why am I saying that it's so far from the truth? Because when you will make an investigation, when you're going to speak with yourself, when you're going to talk to yourself, and not just going to criticize yourself, not just going to judge yourself on what that you've done, just you're going to try to observe, you're going to look at your life, you're going to try to breathe and to relax and to think, okay, what brought me to that reaction? What brought me to explode? What brought me to attack? What brought me to lie, to hide? When you really going to face, confront yourself, the answers will be the opposite from those conclusions that you came up with after criticizing yourself and ha hating yourself. The result of that investigation that you will make between you to yourself in front of your inner mirror will bring you to a deep understanding about yourself and to a lot of love and compassion for yourself. You're going to understand why you were so aggressive, why you were so offensive, why you were so rude. Even horrible things that came out of your mouth, things that seems to be like you cannot bring them back, things that like, oh, it's too late. Nothing is late. Just make a deep investigation about yourself and try to find the real reasons for the fact that you attack, that you are arguing, that you are insulting other people, that you're rebuking, that you're, that you're lying, that you're hiding, that you're denying. When a person is standing in front of himself, so he's got two things. One is his body that is acting automatically, corresponding to life situations and your own patterns, the body's patterns means that if when you were 5 or 6 or 7 or 15 or 27, you've been hurt in a very bad way, in a very insulting and a shaming way, you are now in trauma. Your body is reacting against your will, against your control, in a way that you cannot control. There is nothing that you can do. Your body is in trauma. There was a girl one time that she w went out from the house. It's a very powerful example, a very powerful story. A, a girl that went out from her house, a girl, little girl, and she was eating banana. And while she was eating her banana and playing in front of her house, she saw a car accident, a car hit a little child. And it, she was totally scared, she was terrified, an ambulance came and they took that child to the hospital. Whatever happened, happened with that kid. I don't know what happened with that kid. But after two or three months, suddenly that girl ate a banana. And when she ate that banana, suddenly she started shaking and she fell on the ground and she started like lost her control completely. She was in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a panic attack and, and the, her parents couldn't understand what happened to their girl. And they took her to doctors and start thinking maybe the banana, maybe she became allergic, allergic to banana, maybe oh, every time she was eating banana, she was losing her mind. And why? Because the, the taste of that crazy banana that was stuck in her mouth while she saw that car accident woke up that memory of that terrifying sight, that terrifying thing that she saw 
looking at a small child being hit by a car. And the banana was waking up, the memory. And it doesn't have no connection to the banana at all. <coughs> Just that the banana was there in that bad timing. And that's it. So now she cannot eat banana anymore. Because the banana wakes up. So what now are you going to do? Going to take away the banana from her? No, the banana is not the issue. The banana is just waking you up to understand that you need to work on your trauma. So now something has happened in your work, in your job, in your learning, with your parents, with your friends, with your soulmate, with your children, with your life, with yourself, with whatever. It's not it. It's not your parents, it's not your job, it's not financials, it's not your health, it's not the news, it's nothing like that. It's old patterns that have source that have a beginning somewhere deep, deep, deep in your past. Now, if you're going to try to judge yourself now on this situation, my mother, she just said one word. My father, he just, he just called. My wife, she just said one small thing. My kid, he just dropped something. What in the world made me so angry? Why that I will attack? Why would that I will be so furious? Why I, I, why I lost my mind in that situation? If you will now going to try to come to a conclusion based on now reality, based on what that just took place, you're going to bring yourself out as a crazy person. Sick. Crazy. She just said one word, boom, you're going to burn the house for nothing, right? So for nothing, something is wrong. So you're criticizing yourself. But that's why I said before, it's not the truth. That conclusion of you judging yourself based on what that you see on the surface will never going to reflect the truth because it's not the truth. Because the real reason why you exploded now is not because that they dropped something or that your mother called. It's because of some ancient memory in the back of your mind that just been woke up by that act of today. So the investigation will bring you to the roots of your problem and then you can heal it. So now, what will be the conclusion? If you will make that deep investigation and you will go with your memory, with your thoughts, take that situation to the field and ask yourself, you don't need to be an angel, you don't need to be a divine righteous man from heaven, you just need to be who that you are and to open a discussion with yourself. If it's too hard for you to talk, so write. But force yourself to write another line after completing the first. Asking yourself questions. Why was I so furious? Why I exploded? Why I reacted so harshly? Why I was scared? From what I was so scared? What was the reason for my fear? I was afraid not to have money. Okay, afraid not to have money. Okay, what will be if I won't have money? What will happen to me? Go deeper and deeper with that investigation. I won't be able to pay my bills. Okay, let's say I'm not paying my bills. What's going to happen? They're going to cut off the electricity. Okay, I don't have electricity now in my house. What's the problem? Am I afraid of the darkness? I'm afraid from the cold. I'm afraid that my wife is going to take my head off. What am I afraid of that will happen if I won't pay my bills? What's the real reason? And then if you're not going to put your pen down, if you're not going to stop your hit Buddha dude, your conversation with yourself, just you're going to keep on, 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 on digging, finding the real reason for why am I so scared, from why am I losing my temper, why I'm, I'm, I'm falling so low to such filthy places, why I can't deal. There are people, literally, that are killing themselves, drowning themselves in drugs and in alcohol and in, in, in filthy movies and filthy things, destroying their own lives with, with filthy habits, ruining their own lives with their bare hands. And you can ask them, why are you doing it to yourself? You're going to say, I don't know. I'm losing my mind. I'm seeing this. I'm losing my mind. I'm smelling this. I'm losing my mind. Someone is annoying me. I'm losing my mind. That's not the truth. That's not the truth. You're not as crazy as, as you think about yourself. Go deeper. Try to make that investigation about yourself and find the roots 
of your problem. And when you're going to do that, you're going to find an innocent child that doesn't know what to do with himself over there. That's who that you are. That's why you're so afraid. And this is why when always people are talking to me and explaining to me that Hashem is angry at them and that they've been punished and it's a punishment, I'm laughing from that method. It's nonsense. It's not the truth. Hashem will never gonna judge you on something that happened to you because of some fear that woke up inside of you and blinded you and took away the will from your, from your, from your arms that took away the power of control from your hands, if you were terrified and now you acted out of your fear with no free choice over there because of your anxiety, because of your stress, you lost your mind, so you are not qualified now to be judged. You're not a person that can be judged because you were acting out of your stress. So now, to all of the people that are very, very strong in blaming themselves, they're going to ask now, okay, so you exempt me from all of my sins, I allow to do everything, now I'll be cruel to everyone, I have my reasons, I have my fears, I got the green light from you, I can do whatever I want. No. The access to the truth, to the inner truth of your soul, will be given to you only if your search is a search of truth. Only if you're willing to find the reasons for your problem, because you have the intention to uproot them, to fix them, to heal your spirit, to heal yourself and to heal other people, then you will receive the real access to the truth. The fact that you're wrong by judging yourself and criticizing yourself is not permitting you to violate the rules or to sin, or to crime, or to do things against logic, or against good. Never. We're not justifying the bad action. We're just not letting ourselves kill ourselves with the negative blamings and, 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 and criticism. Because that is wrong. The fact that you sinned, the fact that you failed, is not wrong. It's 100% right. You failed. You did something wrong. You're not allowed to scream at your parents. You're not supposed to fight with your wife. You're not supposed to hit or insult your children or talk gossip about someone else because you're afraid that he will harm you. I don't know what. You're not allowed to sin. We're not justifying the sin and the crimes. Not at all. We're just explaining to ourselves that the solution for our life problems is not flat, is not an external and outside shallow solution. The real solution is an inner solution that demands us to deal and to make an investigation into the depths of our souls that we will find the truth, the real truth, the real motive, the real reason for your sorrow, for your pain, for those feelings of loss. We've been betrayed. This is something very painful. And I can describe that thing for you and it will, it will ring a bell, you're going to understand. Something happened in this world when Hashem decided to hide His face from us, when the Creator decided to hide His face from us, in that moment we felt something that never, never happened before. We are not creations that are able to live our lives be without our father, without our parents. Now, as a child, for an example, if you lost your, ch your parents in a young age or whatever, even if you've been adopted to the most warm family in the world, you will always gonna have that pinch of, of who, who are my real parents, what happened to my father, who is really my mother. But to that adopting mother, she is amazing. She is a wonderful person. She loved you. She kissed you. She gave you everything. She remembered your birthday. She respected you. Never screamed at you. I don't know. Something is missing. 
It's not complete. Where are my parents? You will want to see those parents, even if you're going to see that you're talking about uh, 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 the most broken couple in the world, that he's drunk, thrown somewhere else in, in, in a foreign country, and she's, I don't know what, you will want to see them. You will want to hug them. You will want to come back to, the root, to your roots, to the truth. Now we, as creations of the Almighty, of the Creator, for us, the fact that we are now here inside of a body divided from our spiritual source, locked and blocked in the physical world, for us, it's a mystery. For us, it's a problem. For us, okay, I'm stuck here now. What should I do with my time? Because you're sitting like in prison in, 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 for time, for a certain time, and you don't know what to do. And some people are guiding you to work on your skills and some other people are guiding you to take care of your future. And some of them will tell you to protect yourself and to, and to, and to work and to have uh, a medical security uh, uh, um, insurance. And, and, and some others are going to tell you that you must learn Torah and that you must be righteous. And everyone will come to you with their opinions, with their solutions, but it will not going to give you the complete answer because it will always going to stay a physical answer. And the evidence for that is that even if you will try to find a solution from the Bible, okay, now you're holding the Bible, the most holiest book in the world, no one going to argue about it, the Bible, the amazing Torah, wonderful. Now I'm going to tell you, look, look at it, look at that page. Look, look at that page. It's so amazing. I'm asking you, can you see my face? Look at it. Can you see my face? Why can't you see the face? Why can't? Because it's blocking the light. It's physical and it's revealing a lot of light. Something is amazing here. It's talking about Shabbat and there are prayers and there are amazing stories. Yes, but it's blocking the light because it's also trapped in physicality. And as long as it's, it is trapped in physicality, it blocks the light. Look at the sky. On the sky it's written that they are illuminating purity. It's the, the word Tohar is used for, for the sky. The sky is so pure, nothing can impure the sky. The sky is showing to us the throne of honor. Okay, now when you look at the brightest sky in the most sunny day in the world that ever took place in the world, can you really see the throne of honor? Or that the sky is blocking the light of Hashem from you? Because it's a creation. Now look at the, the sun. The sun, it's the source of light of the universe. Look at it. It's only light. It's only flaming holy fire that cannot be impured and contaminated ever in the world. It's pure light. Look at it. Can you see Hashem? You cannot see Hashem. You're being blinded by the sun. And the sun is the source of light in the universe. It's the highest and, and, lightest, and, and brightest thing in the, in the creation. And you cannot see Hashem because it's still dressed, the light of Hashem is dressed in that physical covers, covering. And you cannot see through that covering. So even if a person is telling you, hey, learn Torah, and you say, okay, it is inspiring, it is the truth, I believe in it, it can bring you only to level 1000. But 1001 it cannot take you there. 1001 depends in the intention of your heart, in the purity of your heart, in your power of understanding, in your holy desire to come closer to the Creator. Your soul must have a part in your, in, in your actions. And if your soul is, is off, is covered, you cannot grow. Even if you're spending 70 years in front of open books, 
learning all Shas, all Mishnayot, all Gemarot, know all the verses by heart, every Shabbat in the synagogue for Shacharit, Mincha, Arvit, Musaf, your Chazan, you're standing in front of the pillar, in front of the ark, and you're praying, and you can run the synagogue, you can be the chief rabbi of your community, and you're still going to live your life in darkness if your soul is not shining from within. Now, the advice, like we said before, must be a deeper advice. All of those guidings that are telling people, hey, go to learn, hey, go take, find a job, hey, those are good advice. But it must be only as a process of development. It cannot be that you will imagine to yourself that that will be the solution for your life. Your solution of your life will never going to be depend in how many pages you learn today. It cannot be that the solution for your life will be if you woke up to pray for in sunrise or you haven't. It cannot be. It must be that you can succeed even if you woke up at 11. It must be. Because the Creator is over there with you even in the most impure places, even in the most contaminated places, He is over there with you. So it means that there is an outlet, that there is a lifeline, even if you failed, even if you cannot learn. So again, we're not justifying the laziness. No, okay, now don't learn. No, okay, now don't pray. No, do as much as you can. But first of all, Focus your mind into that process of searching for the real truth that is coming from inside. Connect yourself to your soul. You cannot be connected to external sources of wisdom and to, and to fill yourself through them. That will never going to complete you. Like that the verse is saying, Lo levado adam. Not only on bread the person will live. Yes, you need bread, but not only bread. Bread cannot feed you completely. Water cannot satisfy you completely. You can eat and drink and to be a dead walking person. And learning Torah and to stay dead. And praying three times in a day in a synagogue and to be dead. To be married with ten children and to be dead. To own properties and to be a dead, sad person with no joy, with no real connection to what that you do, to your actions. Why? Because you're satisfying yourselves with answers that are on the surface. Like that example that we said before. If we're now going to take away that banana from the mouth of that girl, we're not going to solve her problem. If now we're going to say that my mother, she's so annoying, or that my partner, he's so aggressive, and his, his mouth is so filthy, it's not going to fix your problem. You need to understand what is your problem. What is the trigger? What is that ancient memory that it is waking up, that those life situations waking up inside of you that makes you lose your mind? You're not supposed to lose your mind because of one sentence of your partner or the approach of your mother. Who cares? If you're a stable and solid and balanced person, no wind in the world going to move you from your place. If you're happy, nothing going to move your happiness. If you're confident, no bad rumor going to destroy your confidence and your happiness. Nothing going to take you away from your place. And if something took you away from your place, away from your happiness, away from your joy, so don't blame it, because it's just showing to you and teaching you about your lack of stability. And it got roots. Your lackings belongs to you. Find the inner solution to your problems, and then you will find Hashem. Why you will find Hashem? Because Hashem, He is the truth. And it's written that when Hashem is judging the person in heaven after 120, so if court judged the person, court in heaven, so they will put all of his sins and all of his mitzvot, good things, good actions on the, on the, on the scale, and they will see. 
If he's guilty, he will pay. But if he's innocent, great, he will be rewarded. After paying on all of his sins, if now the, the, the sins been purified by the punishments, now he, is, now he became innocent, he can enjoy the reward for all of the good actions that he, that he did in his lifetime. Amazing. That's heaven court. But if Hashem is judging the person, so it's written that the person will always come out from that trial innocent. How can it be? There must be ju justice. How can it be that Hashem will judge a person and will declare on him that he will be that he is righteous, that he is clean if he sinned? Because Hashem is looking deeper. Because the court are looking at the surface. Okay, tell me the numbers. I want to know how many Shabbos says, how much food, what was the quality of that food, was it kosher, who was the ritual slaughterer, what was the merits from heaven, how was he talking, how was he thinking. They are calculating numbers. They are making an accounting of your lifetime. How many hours, how many minutes, in which places, with which thoughts. Great. That's the job of court. But Hashem is not doing that. Hashem is looking deep into the roots of your soul and He sees the truth that you are innocent. Not that you have not crimed. You crime, but you are innocent. Because your thoughts, because your emotion, because your intention, your soul, the nature of your creation was never about sinning at all. Remind yourself of your worst sin, okay? Every one of us is dragging a whole long, long, long train of, of wagons, of sins in a certain topic that is killing us. One is a, a liar that can't stop lying. One of us is, 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 is a thief always thinking about money. Another one thinks about filthy things. He likes nude. I don't know what. Everyone got something sick in his back, back of his mind that is killing him. Okay, now, take that problem that you have. Great. It's wrong. Agreed. You don't want to do that anymore. Wonderful. Perfect. I'll help you. What's the solution? Go deep to the root. Go to the beginning. Try to remind yourself where and when was the first time that you remember. Use the power of your memory. Where did it start? Where did it start? Where? Where exactly? When? You were seven, you were six, you were three. When? What happened over there? What do you remember? Oh, I remember that neighbor. Oh, I remember that movie. Oh, I remember that... Scenes will come back to your memory. Now I'm asking you, in that first crime of yours, the first, how you, how you call the, the, the Qatar, the first uh, of, the, of the train, the first wagon of the train, how you call it? English, I'm asking in English. Hmm. Hebrew I know, Qatar. You don't have a name for the it? No, no, they call it? No word in English? Come on, guys. Okay, so you, okay. <laughs> Google, Google it. What, what? Kabus? I don't know, you're asking me now? If it's Kabus? I don't know. I know autobus, it's a bus. It's children's books, the front the trains. The okay, so the front, uh, uh, how do you call it? The front, what? Kabus. Kabus, people will know? I know. So. Okay. Myrtle the turtle. How's the locomotive? Locomotive? Okay, I think that's the word, right? Locomotive. Okay, so let's look at it. Kabus is the back. Ah, wow. This is why we were suffering all of our lives. We were going to the wrong direction. Exactly. So that's the answer. That's the answer. Hashem is answering. We're going to the wrong direction. You need to go to the beginning. You need to go to the ancient days. You need to go to the reason, to the motive of the reason of why you were sinning in the first place. Okay, so now remind yourself of your first crime. And now I'm asking you, were you so evil in that day? Were you so bad, so mean? 
That was why that you were sinning? Because you were that person that you hate so much today? Today you hate yourself. Today you're judging yourself as the most evil person in the universe. You're corrupted and you're ruined and you're destroyed and you're humiliated and you're worthless and hopeless. Every bad word that you can come up with, okay, fit to you 100%. Okay, great. Now I'm asking you, go to the roots. Go to the beginning. Because the first sin, that was the sin that brought you to commit the second one. The first one, after that you did it, after that you sinned in the first time, something happened inside of you that brought you to commit the second one. The second one is a result of the first. Now, if you're going to do tshuva on the last, or if you're going to do tshuva on the one before, you're not going to finish, you're not going to stop that train from running. It will always going to continue because of the locomotion that is still driving. The first one, the source, he is the reason for the second, and the second and the first combination brings the third. And one, two, and three brings the fourth, and then the fifth, and, 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 and sixth, and on. It's continuing as a result of the beginning. Now, let's deal with the beginning. And now I'm inviting you to do tshuva, asking you, come, do tshuva. Let's do tshuva on the first one. Let's now apologize to Hashem on the first one. I'm telling you, it's a joke. You can say to Hashem, I'm sorry. But if you're really going to check yourself on that sin, you were not so bad at all. You were not the one to blame. Maybe your neighbor, maybe that friend, maybe that dog. Someone, someone destroyed you in that day. And you in that day were terrified and you were lost and you were confused. And you were looking for a little bit of comfort or respect, love, some appreciation. You were afraid to lose the company. You were afraid to lose your friend. You were afraid to lose your respect, your self-esteem. Some innocent reason brought you to sin. That devil, that snake that attempted you to sin in that day, he was sneaky. He was mean. He was cruel. He took an innocent child and destroyed him. <coughs> and hit him when he was weak. When he was confused. When he was alone. When he didn't have no one to ask for help from. That's when he hit you. And when he hit you, he bite you and put his poison inside of you that woke you up to desire to sin again. It's not you. It's the poison that runs in your veins. And there is only one way to clean it, to go to the beginning and to suck the truth out of it that it wasn't your fault, that it's not you, that it was the snake that failed first man and his wife Eve. It's not you. You are not such a sinner to hate yourself and to blame yourself on all of your mistakes now, again, we're not justifying our sins. We're not justifying our mistakes. We want to clean ourselves from them. But the way that will give us the power to do that is only if we will deal with the truth, with reality. And that's the reason for our sin, not the sin itself. Now, you say, but I cannot cry anymore. I agree. I cannot sin. I'm hurting people. I'm doing horrible things, I agree. But I'm asking you, is that hard way that you rebuke yourself and hate yourself and punish yourself and, and torturing yourself, did it help you until today really to heal yourself and you stopped crying? If you stopped crying, great. But if you have not stopped yet, so stop with that bad habit because it just drains your power and your energy and make you hate yourself and by that losing more power and more hope and losing the connection to Hashem. Why? People are blaming themselves for years 
and also pretending to serve the Creator. They're pretending to be religious, they're keeping Shabbat, and they're hating themselves. They're eating kosher, and they're hating themselves. They're putting tefillin, they're doing everything modestly, and they're hating themselves. How come? If you're a holy child of the Creator, you should love yourself. You should admire yourself. You are a holy child. The torch of light of this generation. You're a holy creation. You know who you are? If you really believe that you are the holiest creation, that you're the crown of the nations, that you're someone that is, is worthy, that Hashem, the Creator, chose you to hand the Torah to you, to give you something so powerful, Hashem found something great in you. Why you hate yourself? Why you blame yourself? Why you criticize yourself? Because I'm not worthy. Okay, if you're not worthy, why are you not dealing with that? Why are you not fixing it? Because you are disconnected from the truth. This is why you are just pretending to be religious and you're not really bonded and connected to the Creator. Because to act and to fake religion is not our mission. To play a certain game and a show of being from, of being orthodox, of being strong in a certain path, that's not our mission. Our mission is really to be close to Hashem. And what is the name of Hashem? Hashem Elokechem Emet. He is the God of truth. His name is truth. When you're judging yourself only on the surface and you're doing tshuva only on the external, the outside layers of your daily function, you're coming with the wrong conclusions. You're not reaching the truth, like we said before. You're going to hate yourself. You're going to try to take out the banana. It's not the answer. It's not the tshuva. It's not the real way. To do tshuva is to come back. To come back to the truth. To come back to reality. To come back to the Creator. Because He was over there with you when you failed. In the first time that you failed. And it was not your fault when you failed. When Adam and Eve failed in that horrible day, it was not their fault. And you can find excuses and ways to judge them. And even righteous people along the years came up with reasons and why she messed up and he messed up and blaming him and blaming her. It's too easy. It's not the truth. Hashem sent them to heaven. Yes, He commanded them. But was He warning them from the snake? There is no warning from the snake. Suddenly she's finding herself all alone in front of a snake. Do you know what to do in front of the snake when you're all alone? No one knows what to do. Go back to your childhood when you were seven years old and you failed big time over there. There was a snake over there and no one warned you and you were alone. And that's why you sinned. And then you failed others, like that she failed her husband because she was afraid to stay alone. And then he was blaming her and she was blaming him and all argument and messed up. And now they've been exiled from heaven. And that's why we're in the darkness. Now you want to go back? Go back to reality. For us as creations to be inside of a body that is exposed to snakes and to weather and to weapon, and to crimes, and to other people, bad and negative will, to car accidents, to germs, to wars. For us, it, it leaves us with a feeling of, of betrayed. We don't know what to do. Because where is Hashem, we're asking ourselves. Hashem was walking between them over there in heaven. Where were you, Hashem? She's asking. Where were you, Adam, my husband? She's asking. And he can ask the same. And this is a question that doesn't put Hashem in the shade, in a bad light. Not at all. It's opening a discussion. It's opening a relationship that we're asking him, Hashem, come back. We're not angry. We're not upset. We're just lost trapped inside of our own bodies, in our own houses, in our own streets, in our own neighborhoods, in our own communities, in our own lands, in our own countries. We don't know where are you. 
and we're asking you, please come back. I'm just trying to connect you to reality and then from that point of truth, ask Him. Open a conversation, tell Him what, what, what in the world you wanted me to do. I was so alone, I was so scared, I was so terrified, I was surrounded, I was lost, Hashem. And then you will start having compassion on yourself and understanding on who that you are and the light of truth, because it's the truth. So the light of truth will shine upon you. And suddenly you will feel that Hashem was with you over there, even that you failed, even that you sinned. And suddenly you're going to understand that Hashem Itbarach failed you, and maybe for a reason. And maybe there was something deep in that path. Maybe you had to go through that life journey. Maybe you came up with some pearls and diamonds and gold out of that journey. Maybe some spiritual sparks been revealed to you in that humble path of consistent failures, one after the other, one after the other. Maybe it brought you somewhere that today is much more valuable than not to sin. Because we know today that it's written that the level of a Baal Tshuva, that the person that came back completely to Hashem, is higher than the level of a righteous man that never sinned. So maybe now, after dipping in those swamps of darkness, in those most filthy, most contaminated places, after drowning over there and, and swallowing all that filth and, and coming so torn and wounded, but now, when you're observing it yourself, Maybe some diamonds glued to your outfit. Maybe you can look at yourself today and not criticize all of those patches and husks that are surrounding you. Maybe Hashem built a certain armor that is protecting you. Maybe you develop certain skills that will give you certain power to go and to rescue other people from those swamps of despair. And that's a higher, more, more, more meaningful mission than just to walk with your clean suit in heaven. Maybe to go and rescue people, to create souls, to bring people back to life, back to faith. Maybe that's a noble purpose and you're qualified with your tattoos, with your scars, with your lack of learning, with your lack of, of sleep, with your fears, with your anxieties. Maybe the honesty and your ability today to share and to talk and to feel compassion to other people. Maybe your humility, that you bought that humility in those swamps of despair, in those dark, bitter hours. That's where you bought your humility. Not when you're partying in the, on the roofs of the world, no. Over there you were very arrogant. The humility you bought after realizing how bad you were, how far you were, how neglected, how filthy, how weak you are. Maybe those pearls of wisdom that you bought is part of your mission. So now you will start appreciating even Hashem on hiding His face from you and sending you to that horrible mission, not horrible only for you. Also for me, Hashem is telling you, my child. My child, it was horrible for me to see you drowning, to see you choking, to see you suffering. You think that Hashem can suffer our pain? You think that Hashem can see us crying? You know what happened to a parent when he sees his children struggling? All of his guts are turning upside down. My child, he doesn't know how to pay his rent. My child, he doesn't finish the month. My child, he's not married. My child, he's got issues with his soulmate, with his wife, with, his, with her husband. Oh, my child. Oh, my child. Oh, my God. <laughs> Parents are losing their mind. To wake us up to understand what happened in kingship of heaven. You think that you're suffering. Hashem is suffering much more than us on our issues. In all of our sorrow, He is suffering. In all of our life situations, He is with us. He is feeling the pain. Now you want to tell Him, Okay, Hashem, so stop the pain. He is. By giving you wisdom. 
by giving you guidings, by building your character to be a strong personality, an honest person that is able to investigate and to find the truth. It is so precious. The truth is so valuable, is so great, is so enormous that when it will shine, that when in the end it will glow and everyone will catch the simplicity of the universe, the greatness and the godliness of it, how pure and everything is calculated and everything is so perfect and divine, when that chip will fall, when we're going to wake up, we're going to see a whole different picture. That everything was for the good. That everything was building us. Gave us sparks of inspiration. And gave us hope. And, and straightened our path to the right way. To find something in the end of our journeys. And not to lose everything we had. And that's the path that only people that are searching for the truth will, will achieve. Not people that are trying to... To, to drop their responsibility and to be lazy. They will never going to feel the, the wisdom. They will never going to sense the purity. They will never going to enjoy the prosperity of, of, of redemption, the joyful moments of, of finding the truth and understanding, getting rid of all the doubts and fears, and connecting ourselves with, with ropes of love to, to the root of, of our being, to the Creator. So, I can just thank Hashem Ibach for emptying me before the class and coming as the most broken vessel I ever seen in my life to my lectures. I'm for sure my most broken student of mine. <laughs> I'm also listening to my classes, really. When I'm talking, I'm listening. I'm not planning those classes. I'm being honest with you. I don't have that wisdom. I just have that desire to find the truth. And because that I'm forcing myself to it, I'm finding it. I'm finding it. Because whatever you want to achieve, that's what they're going to give you from heaven. They're leading you in the path that based on your desire, whatever you want, you will receive. If you want money, okay, you're going to be surrounded with money. You want gold, you'll have gold. You don't believe in that maybe because Hashem really sees people that really desire money, they have money. They're, surround, they're drowning with money. People that don't have anything in their mind except of money, they're drowning in money. You're saying to yourself, but I also want money and I don't have. It's not true. You're lying to yourself. You don't really want money. You don't want to be afraid of not having money, so you're praying for money. But the truth is that you don't want money. You don't want to be afraid. But you don't understand that you need to deal with your fears, so you're asking for money. That's why your prayers are not being answered. Because you're not really asking your prayers with truth. Because you don't really want money. You just don't want to be scared anymore. So say to Hashem, Hashem, I don't want to be scared. Now that's a worthy prayer. That's a prayer that expressed your truth. And that is a prayer that will be answered. But if you're going to keep on saying money, 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 it's not going to come. It's not going to come because you're not asking it with truth. And Hashem is close to everyone that is calling Him with truth. And you're not saying the truth. You're saying money, money, money. But the truth is that you're just scared not to have money, because your awareness is very flat. You think that money will solve your problems, but your lack of confidence, that's what you lack of. Your lack of happiness, inner happiness, that's what you lack of. Lack of confidence in the Creator, that He is supplying all your needs, that He's really giving and bringing everything, delivers everything you need. Got it? Thank you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.